Hello Cities Church, Pastor Michael here. Today we are in Philippians chapter 2, and this is truly one of my favorite chapters in the whole Bible. Uh, my life verses are actually verses 14 through 18 in Philippians chapter 2. And one of the reasons why I like this chapter so much is that it gives practical, challenging, and very insightful ways in how to live life. Uh, life is especially in the context of suffering. In fact, the end of chapter 1 sets up chapter 2 by giving the context of suffering and hardship and conflict. Um, that's how life is. Uh, often we face hardship and challenges, and we find ourselves currently in a context of suffering and hardship. We have brothers and sisters in our church family who are suffering the effects of the economy, uh, job loss. Um, we all, in some degree, are cooped up at home. We are shelter in place, so many of us, uh, we all should be, um, we're at home and we're living on top of each other. Um, some of us have full households and the effects of that can be suffering from sin, specifically the sin of selfishness uh, on top of each other, which is a form of suffering. Um, or we're alone um, and social distancing brings the challenge of isolation. And we also have members who are in the healthcare industry and are, are on the, uh, the front lines of battling of this virus every day. Um, we love you all, and the pastors um, meet regularly via um, video conferencing, and we are praying for you all, and we love you all very much. If you are feeling a bit lost right now, um, specifically in your heart at the moment, and it's difficult to focus with so much going on uh, around us, if you have uh, some struggles with um, direction or purpose, it's a perfect time to let Philippians 2 um, help you, guide your heart, and offer you, um, to point you in the right direction. So today I want to highlight um, one part of um, Philippians chapter 2 and how to live our life. And there are others from chapter 2, lots of practicals. I encourage you to read the entire chapter. But for now, I just want to mention one practical concept on how to live life, uh, especially in the context of hardship, and it's humility. So humility is a core value in Christianity. Okay, let's look at verses 3 and 4 in Philippians uh, chapter 2. Do nothing from rivalry or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. So every one of us is prone to think too highly of ourselves. Okay, that's the issue. Self-focus, arrogance slips in subtly and powerfully in our lives. Humility, on the other hand, is a powerful heart-level attitude that changes not only your life, but it impacts and changes the lives of the people around you. Paul challenges us to consider the people around us and their interests. A heart-level attitude of humility leads us to look away from ourselves in a joyful manner, not begrudgingly, but in a joyful manner, look, look away from us and look at the people around you and consider their interests and ask the question, how are you doing? How can I help you? Looking away from yourself. Humility tells us that we don't have everything figured out. You don't have everything figured out. We don't know everything. Okay? Humility allows us to go talk to the other person, ask them how they're doing and care about it, seeking their interests above our own. So right now, we all feel unique pressure right now. We all are facing unique challenges, every one of us. Uh, for, for me and my family, we face probably a more typical challenge right now, which is trying to juggle homeschool uh, and working remote, and we're all living on top of each other. Uh, tempers can flare and uh, frustrations can abound, uh, and it can feel like there's, there's no way to get away from it, like trapped. Uh, in, in fact, um, the reality is you can't get away. Uh, that's the point. Uh, we, <laughs> we are shelter in place and alone time is nearly impossible. So, so for example, alone time for me would be work, um, which is working in this office here in the closet. So my office is in the closet. This is where I go to work. And uh, for Emily, she's with the kids all day, which is different because typically they're in school. Um, and in our selfishness, um, we're not humbly receiving um, these blessings of work and family. We're not receiving it with thankfulness. Often, um, selfishness can creep in instead of humility, but we need Christ-centered humility to impact our attitude and impact one another uh, around us. 
So in, in our challenging context of hardship, we need to start with being self-aware of our attitudes and we need to be aware of ways that we're being selfish. Okay, Paul is challenging us to look away from ourselves, look to Jesus, and then consider the people around you and how you might be affecting them. So start with the person next to you. And if you're alone in isolation because of the shelter in place, consider a person you could reach out to. Consider a person you could do, uh, could invite um, to do a FaceTime happy hour with and connect with them. And start by asking that person, ask the person, how are you doing? And start to consider their interests above your own. So here's the focus for us. Stop, <laughs> stop, breathe, and consider other people. Consider other people who are around you. And think about what are they dealing with? Don't just focus on your own problems all the time. Think about what are other people dealing with. Think about your family. Think about your life group, your community group, and consider their interests above yours. So here's the question for you. Are you considering other in others' interests above your own? And the best person at this who put their interests above their own was Jesus. So the only way we can put others' interests above ours is Jesus. He's the one we need to look through. We can't skip verses 5 through 11. I encourage you um, to go back and read them again. Those verses are the bedrock, okay? Here's the reality. We all struggle with humility. We want to live in humility. Um, we want to be humble people, but we fail. And that's okay. I want to tell you, that's okay. We all fail. And it's okay that we fail because we have an awesome Savior who's there to help us. That's our hope. Our hope is in that Savior. And how do we get that hope? We look to Jesus to help us. We remember what he did. Okay, Jesus left his throne in heaven and he became a servant. He willingly entered into the hardship of life. Jesus chose to enter the world of the virus. He knew he was going to suffer. He knew he was going into that world. It's like knowing that you're going to go serve in an area that is full of coronavirus to go into that community and help them. And you go anyways. Jesus knew what he was doing and he did it. He came and he suffered and he did it for you. He entered the world of the virus for you. And he perfectly embodied humility. He humbly died on a cross being a sacrifice for us. And he rose from the dead and he is alive now. Jesus is alive. Jesus is real. And his name is above every name. We can be humbled by the fact that his name is greater than our name. His name is greater than my name. His name is greater than your name. His name is the greatest and we worship him. Life does not center on you and me. We are not the center. We are not the end all be all. And that is good news. We have a savior who is perfect and who has this under control. So as we pursue humility, Jesus is our foundation and we need to look to him.